After travelling back to New Zealand to visit family, attending the Newport Boat Show and doing a Patreon meetup in LA, we came back to the boat to find we had been struck by lightning for the second time. It was a really tough few weeks troubleshooting and replacing all the damaged electrical components, around 15 grand worth of gear, a lot of which we picked up while doing the Annapolis Boat Show. So we were finally ready to set off on a 2,500 mile journey from the bottom of Costa Rica to the top of Mexico, except we were missing one crucial piece of equipment. Hurricane Irma boats tossed. Here we are at this marina. Hi, my name's Colin. I used to be a chief engineer on super yachts, but gave it all up to buy a hurricane damaged Lagoon 450. My friends and I are fixing it up as we go and are determined to circumnavigate the entire planet. So subscribe if you want some inspiration to live life to the fullest. 20 years from now, you will be more disappointed by the things you didn't do than by the things you did. So what are you waiting for? We're leaving. We're going up towards Tamarindo area to see Ben Zuba, my old business partner and still a very, very good friend. We don't have an autopilot, so we're going to be hand steering the entire way, 230 miles. So it's going to be really challenging. It's not going to be pleasant. Luckily, there's seven of us, so we can get a bit of a rotation happening. It's just never fun to hand steer. Golfito, Costa Rica, done. It's a nice spot, but there's not much here. I'm ready to go to Mexico. Crystal clear water, fishing, diving. You can't fish or dive, what are you talking about? <laughs> Practice. <laughs> On the move again. Exciting. You made it. The new crew members were Will from Scotland and Barbara from Switzerland. And you will hear from them later in the episode. And of course, you already know Jamie, Tom, and Britt. So we had the A-Team on board for our first passage in a very long time. Vacuum sealing our chicken we just bought. Look at our shopping. <laughs> oh, look, there's a beer hiding in there too, look. What's this, like $600 worth of canned food? Well, you're asking, dude. Be good, man. And don't Thank forget, you for follow your dreams. Arrival. You call me if you have a party. I mean, emergency. <laughs> <laughs> this guy You come and parlay with us. <laughs> Brother, God bless you, okay? Fair winds. Thanks, and man. Trip, okay? Honestly, thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, we're out of here. Bummer off. Feels so good to be getting out of here. So good. Just lost depth. Got no autopilot. Wind is working, so that's good. It's gonna be like 15 to 20 knots, like 20 or 30 degrees from us. So we can't really, really even sail in that. So it's gonna be a pretty rough night. It felt so good to be on the move again. It was still well and truly the wet season, so we wanted to move north as quickly as possible. The next few weeks were going to predominantly involve us sailing into the wind. So it was going to be a tough slog. And on top of that, we would have to hand steer until Tamarindo, where our new autopilot was waiting for us. So it's going to be a good test, not only for the original crew, but also the two new crew members. I've just got such huge appreciation for how sailors used to navigate back in the day. You know, I've got a chart plotter right here and stuff, but before all of that, these sorts of conditions it's interesting I'm finding the best way to, to keep our heading is to, to pay attention to the wind just got absolutely no other reference I can't see a single thing we're just in this rain cloud right now okay guys so we're on the graveyard ship and it is a nightmare definitely don't want to be doing this and run me with <laughs> the wind has finally done what it was meant to do, it's come out of the northwest, and uh, so now we're able to sail and we're not trying to motor into it. But we're doing consistent seven and a half knots, um, and the boat just feels so much smoother with the sails up. So it was good to be sailing, baby. Hey guys, as you know, last night the weather was absolutely shit. It was 
wind on our nose, raining, little squalls coming through, rough weather, pitch black dark, hand steering, everything that you don't want we had. <clears throat> um, and one of the battens fell out of the main sail. So now we have to try and drop the lazy jacks because it's still a bit rough, but it's not that windy. Um, we're gonna try and drop the lazy jacks and then let the sail fall down a little bit and then we'll try and put the batten back in. So let's see how this goes. This could end in disaster. If a wave hits us on the side, which they're hitting us beam on, and we all could end up with the sail everywhere. Let's have a look. <laughs> oh. Uh -oh. Got it. So we'll put the main up after we go through the squall. There's going to be some water, not just in the ocean, but also falling out of the sky. <laughs> Here we have our little. See what a pro, not really little, it's a big one. It's 42 gallons per hour. Water maker, we haven't run it since we left Golfido. So we're gonna give it a little test. I bumped these pumps after the lightning, so I know they spin, but we're just gonna test the whole system now. So, on she goes. You can hear it running. There we go. By the way, it's really bad not to run water makers every few days or a week at the most. While we haven't been using it for the entire time that I've been away, um, it's been doing an automatic freshwater flush. So these membranes are going to be good. It's the membranes that get damaged. Okay, now I'm going to turn on the high pressure pump. This is AC, so this is running through our inverter. Right now we've got lots of solar coming in. So this is going to take that water that the boost pump gave to it and pressurize it into the membrane, but there's gonna be no back pressure until I turn this valve. The boost pressure came right down because now the high pressure pump's pulling so much water. Nothing's gonna happen here until I um, turn this valve. So now we're gonna crank this up and we'll see the, the back pressure increase. We'll sit it there just for a second. So on parlay, we've got this set up. We've got um, a three-way valve here and it can either go uh, to the port tank, starboard tank, um, or I can put it on the port tank here, but also have a little sample out here. Have a little taste. Mmm, fresh. <laughs> no, it's not, it's a little bit smelly. We'll stop this for a sec. So I'm just gonna run this for a little bit longer. Salt water, when it sits, stinks. Salt water is alive, there's organisms in there. So. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna flush that overboard just for a little bit longer. It just smells a little bit funny. There's absolutely no salt taste whatsoever. What does it smell like? A little less shitty. She's sitting down by the toilet. <laughs> I think it's fine. The solar's bringing in 1300 watts. Our water maker's using 900 watts. So we're still charging our batteries while we're making 40 gallons. Did we tack? Yeah. Per hour. We've got a quarter of a tank on the port side. This should fill up pretty quick. We've got a mahi on the line. Oh, it's, I reckon you're gonna have to slow down. It's big. Come on, baby. Yeah, it's tight. Ooh. <laughs> No, nah, don't do anything. It's it's around there. Fuck! Oh, you think it's wrapped around? Yeah, yeah, it is. You can't lose them now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. You look big. It does actually. <laughs> <laughs> really? Really? This is the first mahi we've caught since we've been in the Pacific. True story. To sail to Costa Rica, don't expect to do any good sailing. It is horrible. Horrible for sailing. So unpredictable. Squalls everywhere. But there's a lot of other things you come to Costa Rica for. But don't expect good sailing. But right now we're just motoring. 
We had wind on the starboard side, then we had wind on the port side. Now it's straight on the nose. It's a bit tough. Very tough. We're good fishermen, aren't we? Huh? Good fishermen, aren't yeah. we? Yeah. You didn't have the trust in us, did you? No, I you did. trust us when we hey, tell you, you, you listen to what we say. I Get trusted back. you always. So here you have Jamie's freshly caught mahi mahi. The food so nice you name it twice. Tom is the super chef, the naked chef if he takes his shorts off. Beautiful, it's only like what, two, one hour old. Okay guys, so now I'm night two. Exactly the same as last night. The wind's just all over the place. Still hand steering. We wish us luck for another night, round two. Uh, we should be there tomorrow. Morning guys, it has been a rough, rough sail. Um, all night, when we came around the peninsula, wherever we went, the wind was directly on the nose and with that came the chop and we were just slamming. I don't think any of us had had much sleep at all. Um, very, very, very draining. Oh, hold on. Oh, it's bigger than the last one. <laughs> <laughs> The first time this has happened. Yeah. Here it comes though. Hey! Oh, it's always stressful. So we just never, it's always a headache. It's a good headache. Help we went, we had to go up me. the front. We've never been up the front like that. But this is another big Pacific thumper. We haven't had fresh fish in months. No, nah, months. So we're going to keep a couple of them and then we can eat it over the next few days before we head back out again. So it's times like these that make the tough times so worth it. After having been absolutely battered around for 48 hours, we finally had some sunshine, two mahi-mahi in the fridge, and a good enough wind direction to be able to have an enjoyable sail for the first time. The new crew were fitting in great, and everyone was in high spirits. Hopefully, it would last. Mexico is massive, so just getting to the bottom of Mexico is nothing. We've got to get all the way up that coast into the wind and current. It's going to be painful. And this is just a little taste. This is 230 miles into the wind and swell and we've got another I think 1400 miles to go so it's no joke but uh, we've got some big plans in Sierra Cortez that's why we want to get up there. All right we're nearly there. Check this out we're gonna go through this little cut. I would never attempt this ever but I saw another catamaran go through. I'll put the drain up because I think it'll look quite cool. The drain's literally in a cloud. I went a bit high, so I'm just coming down and coming out of this cloud, looks sick. We had made it all the way to Flamingo in the north of Costa Rica to visit our friends who we had met sailing in Panama. It had been a really tough 230 mile sail upwind, so we were all very relieved to have finally arrived. We're back, we made it. That's Jeff and Lindsay sailing school. I was pretty shit. Passage is 230 miles of hell. Oh, I wasn't hell, it's just annoying. If it wasn't raining, it'd be a lot better. It's just cold, like, we're not used to cold weather. Not bad. What do you got there? This is called a tanner and it's a mini bagpipe, which you use to practice your bagpiping when you don't have the full set with you. Well, you've been on the boat for a few days now. Mm -hmm. Do you want to tell the audience who you are? My name is Will. I'm from <laughs> Scotland and I'm hanging out on a boat for a wee while, eh? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, you don't have your bagpipes with you, obviously. I don't have my full bagpipes with me. I normally travel everywhere with my bagpipes and it's uh, my thing, my passion but this trip I'm going fast and light, so I left them behind. What are you looking to get out of your trip on Parley? Oh, just to get back in the water, uh, practice my sailing again. I've not sailed like properly, live on a boat in a few years, so just trying to get back up to speed and just have a wild time and a bit of adventure. My father had a boat, uh, Wild Bill himself, so I spent a lot of time in boats growing up, uh, but I've been a bit of a land lover recently. I've been a lot of surfing and a lot of fishing, but not much time sailing on a boat, so. It's really good to be back on board. What are you looking forward to uh, going up towards Mexico? And uh, hoping to get some waves. Supposed to be going to some of the best surf countries in the world, maybe. 
and just want to surf my tits off, basically. There you go. Big Will. You! <laughs> my name is Barbara. They all call me Barbs, <laughs> my new nickname. Um, I really love to travel, so I just quit my job and went traveling with uh, some friends of mine. And yeah, then I found um, this really nice boat with this super lovely crew on Crew Bay. And I thought like, yeah, yeah, write them and see what happened. And this is actually my first time on a catamaran. I only sailed monohulls. So yeah, I'm excited about that. Now we are here, we have to install the autopilot. As soon as this will be done, we will go for our hell of a ride to Mexico. Let's go to Mexico and have some tequila shots. Yeah, yeah. <gasps> tequila shots. I told you we'd get it back, Michael, and we did. So this bottle here, it's from our Patreons in Annapolis. All right, we've got a surprise for Colin and Tom. And we told them we'll bring it back to the boat, and we have. And now we're having sashimi from the mahi we caught, and we've got the bottle out. Why did they give it to us? Oh, because it was the wasabi eating competition. <laughs> Come on, Aussie boy. <laughs> Do it. Yeah, boy. And I won. No, no. <laughs> How is it? Spicy? Yeah, it's a good one. There's two. That is a good one. So you always put a little bit of lettuce with it and it gets a nice crunch. <laughs> no, I like it. Don't you have done it? We always have it like this. You haven't put any soy or anything, just lettuce. Yeah. <laughs> but do you like the crunch? That's me. What else have you done with it? You don't, you don't need to do anything with fresh fish like this. You just cut it and eat it. You put any lemon juice on there? A little bit of lemon juice. Ah, oh. jeez, oh, I forget. <laughs> I don't want to give all the secrets away. Quality wasabi? Good. It's Approved. Really nice. Approved. Approved. For me, sailing around the world represents complete freedom. But having six crew all the time means I can't be completely free. So when they all went to shore, it was a rare opportunity for me to let it all hang out. Just me, my two dogs, and the ocean. Just us, boys. It's just us. <laughs> <laughs>